Johnny and Lori are two of our fabulous presenters. Everybody always enjoys their workshops, and so we're glad that you're going to be a part of it. Um, just a little bit of information about them. Johnny uh, is the third through fifth grade math and gifted teacher at Truman Elementary in Norman, and she is a past Oklahoma Ag in the Classroom Teacher of the Year, as well as last year's National Excellence in Teaching Agriculture Award winner. And then her daughter Lori is presenting with her and Lori is a K through sixth grade STEAM teacher at Moore Public Schools. Perfect. Good afternoon. I am Lori. And I'm Johnny Keel. I'm going to present about dirty little secrets today. Will you call it up over here for me? And um, we just have some fun things we wanted to kind of, I think everybody kind of feels this way. If you have any kids that are wanting to get out, that what did the worm say when his son came in late? Where in earth have you been? So we all need a little bit of humor right now. So we're going to tell you a little bit about uh, dirt and soil. And um, if you were to ask your students, it's not letting me advance. Hang on just a second. Yeah, there we go. If you were to ask your students, what do you need to grow a plant? Chances are they're going to say sun, they're going to say water, and they're going to say soil or dirt. But there is a difference between soil and dirt. So soil is, okay, soil is alive. It's just like a, a busy city. Dirt is like a barren, abandoned area. So soil has lots of microorganisms that are growing inside of it, um, like worms, bacteria, uh, other little insects. Dirt are just particles. Dirt is what you get underneath your, your nails at the end of the day. But dirt is not alive, so you cannot grow anything in it. Um, <clears throat> One of the things that if you were to have a teaspoon of soil, I hope you can see that there, there are more microorganisms in a teaspoon of soil than there are people on earth. So it is definitely um, a living thing. And if you've ever heard of get down and dirty, uh, well, we've got a new uh, saying for that. Get down and dirty can be a good thing. So when you're getting in there and getting your, uh, your fingers dirty and getting that soil on you, there is an, an organism inside of it that will go into your skin, rub into your skin, and that actually creates serotonin. And uh, serotonin is a chemical that your brain secretes that helps to um, make you happy. So we all could use a little extra happiness. So getting um, dirty and getting in there and planting, if you've been doing any of that, I've actually had some time to do that while I've been off, but that is something that can really help you. Um, it takes 500 years to, to um, grow an inch of soil. So because it is such a slow process, it is considered a non-renewable resource. And when it's gone, it's gone. And we need soil. Earth is the only planet that has soil on it. And so it is very important that we take care of our soil. And so we're gonna talk about some different ways for that today. One of the things, if you have questions today, uh, please feel free to put those in the question and Melody will let us know or who, whomever is watching that. And um, if you have a great idea that some lesson that you've maybe uh, shared in your classroom or an idea that comes to mind today, please share that because that's part of the benefit of, pre of presenting for Ag in the Classroom is that we have so many great teachers that we get to work with and you get to uh, share ideas and get new ideas from you. Okay, all right. So Save Our Soil is a lesson that is on Ag in the Classroom and uh, it is a great lesson. They have a video on there that kind of talks about it and does a simulation of using the soil, the earth as, a, as the world and it shows how precious our topsoil is. So we're gonna watch a video real care, just real shortly here that explains it a little bit and then we'll talk about this lesson just a little bit more. 
Okay, hold on. Imagine the earth as an apple. If it were sliced into four pieces, three pieces would represent the earth's bodies of water. One piece would represent land. If the remaining piece were sliced in half again, one piece would represent the land on earth that is unsuitable or inhospitable for farming. This leaves one eighth of the apple representing land that is used to live on and grow food. Three quarters of the remaining apple slice would represent soils too poor to produce food or land covered by cities, roads, and buildings. The remaining piece, one thirty-second of the apple, represents the portion of the earth where food can grow. This is our farmland. The thin peel of this slice represents the farmland's layer of topsoil where our food is grown. Every minute of every day, the United States loses about an acre of farmland. Over 70% of America's fruit, vegetables, and dairy products are produced on farms near cities that lie directly in the path of sprawling development. Sustainable practices and careful planning, such as farmland conservation, are needed to protect this precious resource for today and for the future. Okay, back up. There we go. So this lesson is in the Ag in the Classroom, and it that's a very impactful video. There is one that's on this lesson also, but I kind of like the graphics that went along with that one. And it came from the Nutrients for Life website, which is a great website. It has uh, teacher resources. It has student resources on there. It has a lot of short little video clips about different topics. And so it's a really good Ag in the Classroom um, resource to use. Okay, a dichotomous key is what you use when you are trying to get clues. And some of you may have used these before, but this is just a short little uh, clip that I made that will show you a, how I changed a soil science career one. I, was, I got this out of one of the Nutrients for Life resources, but it's kind of like where they have to answer a question and then they're following a path. So which of these would you most enjoy? Making new friends, playing on the computer, walking outdoors or teach someone a new skill. They're going to select from there and then it's going to keep taking them down until they get to a particular science career that they may be interested in. I found this is really useful with my students because I work a lot with uh, fifth graders who are trying to kind of decide what they want to do when they get on into middle school and high school. And so sometimes they think being having something to do with agriculture is just working on a farm, wearing your overalls, working in the barn, and they don't realize that they're interested in science, they're interested in chemistry, they're interested in technology. All of those um, activities can lead to a soil science career or some type of an agriculture career. So there is a lesson on here. I did not put this in the handout, but it's on the PowerPoint, but I believe everybody's gonna have access to that. And it kind of talks about how to become a crop scientist in a step-by-step which would be great for middle school or high school. And then um, there are ag mag magazines that different states put out. And I saw in, in there one about what soil is in your backyard. So this is one that students could definitely do if we go to a virtual type learning situation where they could take their soil and kind of analyze it and go through and maybe do some graphing and charts to find out what kind of soil uh, are in their own yards. Okay, we did an activity with soil crayons. And so that got us interested in all the different types of soil. And they come in different colors. I've put on here uh, maps that kind of show where different types of soil can be located. And it is the organisms that are inside of them that differentiate the color. I was able to um, get the soil samples that I used for the crayons. And plus I have a lot more from uh, a soil sampling at the Oklahoma State University. I know there are other soil sampling uh, companies throughout Oklahoma and they take their soil samples, they sample them, they figure out what they're made of and then they discard them. So, you know, teachers, what's trash to somebody else is treasures to teachers. So we'll take your leftover soil. And so it was great. You can always ask family members who live out 
of the country, out of the state, out of a different city, and ask them to send soil samples. I know a lot of elementary classes use flat Stanley, and this would be a great way to even include soil with your flat Stanley, with your reading and traveling, where he could send a soil sample from all the places that he's been. And then you can compare and contrast all of those soil samples. And um, that's just a great way to incorporate everything else that you're doing with reading and writing and um, social studies. Also a good way to get your community involved. Okay, so when we made ours, uh, we did not have experience with uh, soil crayons, so we kind of looked around and these were some of the materials that we ordered. Um, we're going to talk to you about the pros and cons of these. The uh, little tubes that I got from Amazon, uh, not so great for this activity. Now I'm sure they may be for others, but when you're pouring in the soil in there, the wax would cool and then it got stuck down in the bottom and it didn't come out like it says on the video. So I would not use those. Uh, they did suggest you could use syringes. So, you know, I'm going to need to experiment a little bit more. But again, that's part of learning is going through that problem solving process. So that's a good thing to be doing with kids. Golf wax, you can buy it at Walmart or Amazon. It's not very expensive and it, and, uh, it does go quite a long ways. Um, we got some of the rubber made type um, Teflon coated uh, ice trays, the cube type ones, but we found out that the cheapy little Dollar Tree plastic ones are the best, although they didn't have them at Dollar Tree. And when I went to Tuesday morning, the lady in front of me bought the last four they had. I don't think she was making soil crayons, but she got my uh, resource. But I've seen these at thrift stores or garage sales or whatever people, you know, they had them and then they don't use them anymore. So teachers have to be resourceful. So this is the way that you would make these. I tried to include pictures from the video just so you could kind of go through the steps and this would be a good tutorial that you could put up for your students as they're going through. But you are going to, you can watch that video and kind of go through and stop it. But I thought it was just easier to kind of have these on here. The grind and sieve the soil. I was fortunate that because I got sand, uh, soil samples, that that was already dried. It had already been ground down and fine toothed and cleaned. So I had to totally skip that. So we're going to, I'm just I'm not going to read all of these. I want you just to have this resource and then I'm going to show you the materials that I used. So then after you prepared it, then you mixed it and poured it and you cooled it and then you had your crayons. But we're going to go through and show you just a little bit about what we did. Um, I'm going to show you the video really quick if I can get there without it being a big problem again. Let's see. Can you see it? Yes, we can. All right. This has no sound, but it's talking to you about the steps. And like I said, this is where I re I got the pictures and things for the slides, but I thought it was just easier for me to do that for you so you already had it prepared in front of your students. We did not have to go through this step right here because we got cleaned and ground up. Um, you could use a mortar and pistol if you needed to, to or hammers. Here they're preparing the wax. We found that it was safer to use a potato peeler than to give your students a knife. And so you can use that and, and it'll still sliver off. When it says to place it in a warm bath, it's just meaning warm water. However, I think you could probably shave with a popsicle stick for your younger ones because the wax is pretty soft. And then you're mixing and pouring it. This guy's a little bit sloppy, but you're not trying to put Crayola out of business. You're just trying to uh, work through the process. Okay, we're gonna kind of show you our things. So let's see, we'll close this. Oh, is that gonna close that one? Uh oh, did I lose you? Did I lose you? No, you're still there, okay. Where's my PowerPoint? Here we go. Stop sharing. Sure. Now, can you see me? 
Uh -huh. Okay, can you see the screen now? We are back to you. Back to us, perfect. We need to show that. Okay, bring that. Can you see us? Yes, ma'am. Okay, we can't see you. Um, <laughs> I was on earlier. It makes it very difficult when you can't tell if anyone's watching you or not. So I totally understand. You guys are doing great. Okay. All right. So here's the mortar and pestle. If you needed to um, grind, you could. You can also use hammers, like she mentioned. You can, uh, of course, students would enjoy stomping, stepping. Um, here's ours, all cleaned up, ready to go. And you can notice the different shades of colors. Hopefully you can see there. Um, here's even a really light color of sand or soil. And after you do it with the mortar and pestle, then you would have to pour it and sift it so that you can get out all of the big chunks and any extra rocks. Here is the wax that we had. We decided to use the potato peeler and we just shaved. So we have these little shavings that we were able to use and then we put them just in a glass jar. You can use whatever you have. This was just an empty salsa jar. And so we put the shavings in there. We filled it up about a fourth of a way. It just depends on how many crayons you wanna make at that time. We had water that was just barely boiling. Once it's barely boiling, we just put the cup or the jar into the pan and then we watched it melt. So we stirred just a little bit to try to help it along. And then we had our wax. Did you want to say something? These are our crayons. I don't know if you can see them. We're going to pull them up here. They might remind you of something else, but they are crayons. Can you see them? Yes, we can. OK, the pros. It's a great chemistry experiment for them to see, for them to problem solve, critical thinking, collaboration, working together. How much wax do we need to add? Is it too waxy? One of the things that we were disappointed with was you can see we had different colors or shades of soil, but our crayons all look very close together. When we colored with them, there is a very slight difference, but not as much differentiation as we had hoped. Um, these were not the best. They tended to, they weren't quite wide enough. They have a little lip on them. And so um, they weren't the ones that we really like to use. We wound up using just a little cheapy plastic one. So, you know, this is a nice time when cheap is good. It asked you to put the parchment paper down in there. When you start putting it down in there, it's all gonna pop out. So we found that you need to put it in there and then just weight it down with something. So we just put the bag of soil over on top of it. If you have close pins or something to clip on there, binder clips, it would, and prepare that ahead of time, that would be a great idea. And that way there's, they're kind of stuck a little bit easier. Here is the, um, little set that I ordered from Amazon and it wasn't very expensive. It was like $12. So that's a good thing that you can probably use it for something else. But this is what happened when we put our wax and our soil down in there. And this is after many hours of trying to get it out. It just kind of squished down in there. So we're thinking that uh, we like the ice tray bit. Okay. So another thing you can practice is whether you want to put the soil and the wax in together to mix, or if you want to put the soil in and then just pour the wax on top. That's just something that you and your students can work with. We poured it, the soil in a cup, and then mixed the wax in and then poured it in the tray. Some um, examples show the soil already in the tray. It's simply up to you and you can try different varieties and see what you like best and what your students like best. Also, that's a way for students to really um, work together and see and practice and see what process works better. If you look at the directions, it says one to one, but it depends on how the clay is made up because if it's more of a clay, 
it may need more of a liquid. If it's more silt, then it may need uh, less of the wax. So Johnny, we had yeah. somebody ask, um, could you spray the the mold with like Pam or like a non-stick -st cooking spray? We did not. We considered that, but we thought it would be hard to get it down in there. But considering how hard it is to get the wax out, that's our next thing to try. So again, you know, and I think it's a good thing too for your kids to see that something that you tried failed, you know, because that is part of the learning process as well. But and it would be hard to get all the areas covered with this with the Pam, but it's worth a try. Maybe even just a little bit of shortening and just squeeze, squishing it around in there with a paintbrush or something might be worth it. So we're anxious to see if you guys try it and you have crayons that work or don't work, we'd love to get pictures or emails so you can kind of tell us about that too. This is definitely something if we end up with distance learning at any time, they could do at home. And um, you could have all kinds of pictures that they send back to you um, using the various colors. Okay, soil paint, definitely an easier process. So if you were interested in soil paint, all you're doing is mixing it with water. Again, it would be kind of a trial and error to see how much water, how much soil, but it's a lot less cleanup. And you're adding in, well, besides the water, you add in either some school glue or some acrylic medium. Um, glue is a lot cheaper, so you're just adding that in two parts water to one part glue just to give it a little bit of a substance before you start to paint. I have a Honey, very fun. Uh, I'm okay. interrupting. Uh, we had one more person ask about do you think if you set your molds in some hot water, it would help loosen the crayons enough to slide out? We did try that, and we're not sure if we didn't leave them long enough. You know, we're just gonna have to experiment a little bit more with it. But um, we're open for suggestions as you try this too. So, Thank you, Johnny. Yeah. Okay. Uh, soil erosion. Soil erosion is something that is happening every day. In fact, every five seconds, the equivalent to the top soil of a soccer field erodes. So that is the equivalent of 2,000 soccer fields per year. That's a lot of topsoil. So that is something, to, you know, that's, Kids love soccer. They have an idea of how big a soccer field is. So that makes it really relevant to students. If you were to say so many acres, they don't have that concept. At least my kids don't. So um, that is something, and parents too. I mean, it's like, wow. And when you show the Apple um, simulation as well, that really kind of hits home with them. World Soil Day um, is an every December the 5th, and it is through an organization that has to do with the United Nations, but they have a lot of resources on there. Again, they have posters, they have videos, they have um, resources, reading material for students and teachers. So that is a great place to go. And I did list it in the resources. Um, there is 50% loss when there is soil erosion. And so, you know, that's a, that's a lot of product. If you have, I've grown tomato plants in my backyard. The wind and rain came really hard and knocked them down and I lost some of my tomato plants. So I can imagine a farmer losing 50% of their crop. So soil erosion is very important. Our world population continues to grow. And so we need uh, to, to protect that. Um, erosion is caused from, it can make the roots not grass not be uh, as strong. It degrades the soil structure and it decreases water. So, okay, now can you see it? And this was the soil paint slide. Okay, um, Ag in the Classroom has great lessons on there about um, soil erosion, all kinds of soil things on there. There's a really cute little love song that I found about um, soil and erosion. And um, let me see if I can get this where you can see it. Thank <laughs> you. 
that this is relevant to students talking about the Dust Bowl in Oklahoma. This is a great little read that was in Soil Science. This is the Nutrients for Life website here. Again, it has teacher resources, student resources. It has ag professionals. It has posters, videos. So a lot of resources there, but this is where I received it. And um, I think you can get some of these magazines free. So they've actually got I know a lot of times it's better for students to have the copy right in front of them, but if they're going digitally, they can get to these resources as well. Okay, Lori's going to talk to us about some erosion labs. We have put the information again on here so that you have it for at home, but she's going to actually show us and go through these. So um, there are a few videos there that talk about them and then we will uh, come back and share some, a little bit more with you, but she's going to talk to you about different types of erosion. Yes, we can. Perfect. All right. So we're looking at an erosion lab. So this is something you're going to push that down to see the table. Um, this is something you could do with your students. You could do in small groups. Um, this is probably something even you could have them do at home because most students have dirt. They may not actually have sand, but you'll be surprised where they could find it. Um, and then they would have rocks and water and just some kind of container or bucket. So, are you able to see all this? Yes, and I have to say how impressed I am. You guys have so much set up to share with us. Thank you for all of your hard work. Yeah. All right, so here's your container. I just have sand in there about halfway, and we have all the directions on the PowerPoint when you get to that. So you'll put the sand at one end, and then you fill the container with two cups of water to represent like the ocean at the end, okay, of that um, container. Then you can create waves if you have um, index cards, something just kind of stiff. Of course, you can just move it around and you can create waves so that they can see that that's going on. They should be able to notice at the very bottom how the bottom is starting to erode or to move and caused, um, caused by the waves. Okay, so eventually the waves would wash away all of the beach um, at some point. So that would be a discussion that you could talk about. So even with little ones, you can have them draw before and after. You can have them do a first, a next, a then. Um, you can do lots of things with sequencing that would be great to go along with what you're working on. Cause and effect is also a great one here with your um, waves. Okay, so the second one, you have a container and you have sand again at the end. You have some pebbles inside as well so that you can form somewhat like a little um, sand dune. Okay, river. when um, down the middle you have a little path that looks like a river. Um, here you can create wind by blowing through a straw. Um, from the back side of the sand dune. So that would be like from over here. Sorry, mine that makes noise too. <laughs> so you can notice how the sand is going down. It's probably harder to see um, on the video, but you can blow down and you can watch how the sand will move 
And you can use lots of different tools. You can use a small straw, you can use something bigger um, so that they can see anywhere from just a light breeze all the way to um, maybe like a hurricane. Okay, so you would notice the small um, pieces of sediment moving and the bigger boulders would stay in place. All right, next, um, actually bring that, or bring that one back. That's my river, oh, that's your river. All right, so we have our river on this one. And again, the directions are all in your bag. But I'm not sure if they're looking at me or not this. Um, you're gonna make this sand a hill. You're gonna cover the riverbed or have some riverbed with pebbles. You'll want small ones, you want large ones so they can see the difference on how ones move. We'll slowly pour some water down the hill to model the flow of a river. And we'll notice that the sand is eroding down the river bank, okay? So hopefully you can see a little bit and you can see it moving. And you should be able to notice that some of the smaller pebbles are moving, okay? So again, of course, you can work your, figure out a way to do that with your students. Um, small groups would be a great way and each group has a different type of activity going on and then you could rotate around to where they get to all of them okay and then of course you can throw in lots of different things with procedures and sequencing and cause and effect next we have our mountain erosion so you have a container with dirt or sand this time it is piled up to where it looks somewhat like a mountain okay you put water in a spray bottle and then you spray the top. It should represent lots of millions of years of erosion from rain and water. You'll notice that the mountain is shorter and the edges are smoother. So then you can talk about erosion here and what's happening. How would that change over many, many years? You can repeat the same mountain erosion activity, but also include trees. So in this case, I have red buds because we're in Oklahoma. And then I also use popsicle sticks as larger ones, depending on what you have at home or what the students may have or in your classroom. And then you do the same thing and you should notice how the trees are helping to slow down the erosion process and not near as much of the soil is going down the hill or the mountain. So we want to protect our trees and things, our large pebbles and boulders and things that will help slow down the erosion. Okay. 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 So again, you can use that to uh, do a before, to do a during, to do an after. One of the, um, one of, I just uh, attended a critical thinking and art workshop and one of the things they talked about was how much research is on making makes thinking it makes it stronger so having your kids doing these hands-on activities and i know that's really difficult this next year but it could be just a very small little box and each one doing their own individual little activity to show the effect of erosion okay any questions there All right, so again, this is all on the video and it even has prompts that tells you when to stop the screen for the students to um, write down. Okay, this uh, having anything to do with forensics is kind of a hot topic, especially with your older students. They watch a lot of TV and all of this. So having them see how soil um, analyzation, how analyzing soil and working with different types of soil, identifying where it came from, how that has tied in to forensics is a big carrot to get them interested in it. And this is actually a case of a double murder case where they use soil. And then there is a soil logic puzzle. I, received, I got it out of this magazine that's from Nutrients for Life. So again, another way to use that resource, but talking to them about how they, um, there's a lot of little lessons that are online about using soils, forensics, and the type of soil and analyzing what it's made out of. 
So again, the soil crayon activity kind of goes along with this so that they're seeing that in kind of a, a fun way and just a, a creative activity and then how that analyzation is used to actually do something for life. So it kind of gets them interested and it also helps with that career um, thinking. Okay, we're gonna talk about ed edible soil layers. I know that this is not necessarily a new activity, but it is definitely one that is a way to teach the layers of soil. And anytime you can add food to learning, it's a big deal. So Lori's gonna show you how to make an edible soil layer. Oh yes. All right, are you back to us? Yes, we are. All right, so this is, would be a great ending activity after you've learned the soils. We have created a poster right here that you can see the layers of soil, and this would be great that you could work on together, create a poster, you can have them write it in their own journals, um, you can have them create it and then use it as an assessment. There's lots of different ways, but this is, pretty much what we're working on. Um, so that would be something you could have. The other. the other poster here is, uh, while we're looking at the posters, are the different kinds of soil. And we have humus, sand, silt, and clay. We're looking at the content, what's in that kind of. So for the humus, it says decayed parts of once living organisms. We're also, also looking at the texture of the different ones. Humus is moist and crumbly. Um, where clay is sticky when it's wet, okay? So you can compare different ones. The humus, the grain size has the largest grain size. So you can compare and look at the different ones, put them in order, depending on your age levels, you can do lots of different things. And again, this can tie back to the forensics as well. All right, so your final activity here, we're looking at the edible layers. Lori, yes. I'm going to interrupt you real quick. We yes. did have a request for you to take a picture of the posters okay. so we can add it to our resources. Perfect. We can do that. Thank Absolutely. you so much. All right. So you just need an empty clear cup. It needs to be clear so that they can see those layers. The bedrock is the very lowest. So that would be your whole Oreo cookie. Next, you have your parent material. Um, we used butterscotch and chocolate chips. So you can just grab your little handful, you can sprinkle them around, you can make sure you make your layer. Um, you might have to have these already in separate little cups for the students, that's up to you. Um, that's your parent material, which is mostly rock that's been weathered. Next you have your subsoil. Your subsoil is your chocolate pudding. So you have a pudding cup and you just have them pour that chocolate pudding over for their next layer. And of course, they would love to eat any extra if you don't want to put all of it in. Next, you have your topsoil. Your topsoil is crushed up Oreo, so I've just crushed it up, and then you can just pour over a layer of your crushed Oreo for your topsoil. That's the really rich layer, and you know, everybody likes uh, Oreo, so that's the best part. That's where the plants are growing and fortified and get their nutrients. Next, I have my organic material and this is just coconut and I've dyed it green to make it look like grass, just for the fun aspect of it. So we have our coconut or grass and then you can finish it up with your worm, of course, at the very top. So um, an easy assessment if you'd like, you can have them add little sticky notes to the side and label each layer. Um, of course, this is fun and you can look at it, but this could be your quick little assessment on whether they remember what each layer is. Um, and it's a great visual for them to see as well. I love that assessment tool. Ladies, you've done a fabulous job and I just wanna let you know, everyone is raving on your um, comments. Personally, I love the justification to eat the Oreos. So thanks Johnny <laughs> for that one. Um, I'm loving all the information you're providing and my students will love these activities. Thank you for the lesson ideas. You both did a great job. So just all kinds of, of comments coming in on what a fantastic job you ladies did. And we appreciate you so much. Well, great. Well, we're just gonna wrap up real quick. Another way that you could assess is have them build it out of Legos. 
So, you know, that's something they may have at home or they may have blocks, you know, well, let them be creative. Uh, we all like free stuff. So if you've ever played Scoot, Scoot is a fun little game. If you have not played it, here is an address where you can get a free template and the game. Um, it's just putting cards around in the room and then the kids are scooting from one card to another, writing down their answers. Or there's an I have who has template and there's even a soil properties escape room. It is $5. We were gonna play it if we were in person, but because uh, we're not, I didn't feel like I should put all those questions out there. If you go online, it tells you a little bit more about it and it does have a digital escape so that the kids could do this at home as well. I've included the Ag in the Classroom lessons. Um, there's even more than what's listed here and all of the soil resources and our emails were on the front if you have any questions. I know it's gonna be a crazy year and we're probably gonna feel like we're meeting ourselves coming and going. So I thought this uh, cartoon was kind of appropriate for how we're going to feel this year. So we thank you. This is a great opportunity for us as well.